Hello, and welcome to this Gibbs Cam Tech Tip. In this video, we'll take a look at the interrogation cursors and explore how they can help streamline your programming by automatically filling in data fields rather than manually identifying or calculating the data. This helps to smooth out your workflow, which I believe not only speeds up the process, it helps to reduce the opportunity for mistakes. Interrogation, in this case, simply means asking for information. We are asking the software to provide the location or other information about an object. There are two interrogation modes in GibbsCam. The first interrogation mode returns a single value, and to use it, I make sure the appropriate field is active and hold down the Alt key while I click on the object that I'm interrogating. GibbsCam returns that object's correct value for the selected field. Notice that when I press the Alt key, my cursor changes from an arrow to a box. This lets me know that I'm in, in interrogation mode and the box is called the interrogation cursor. Using this mode, I can interrogate a point for its X or its Y or its Z location. By the way, I'm using the move part origin window simply because it's one of the dialogues that has X, Y, and Z fields. The things I'm showing you work in other dialogues as well. I can interrogate a circle for the X or the Y or the Z location of its center point. Or I can interrogate for its radius if a radius field is active. Or its diameter, uh, diameter if a diameter field is active. Speaking of diameter, the only diameter field I can think of in Gibbs Cam is the tool diameter field. I can also interrogate a line for its angle, or for the lowest X, Y, or Z point on the line. As of GibbsCam version 24, the software provides virtual points, which give me other options for interrogation and dimensioning. Notice that with the Alt key pressed, as I move over either geometry or the stock outline, these virtual points appear, getting brighter as the cursor gets closer. These give me the ability to interrogate or dimension to these virtual points. Using virtual points, I can interrogate not only the center location of a circle, but the quadrant points. Not only the ends of a line, but the center point. And the corners or midpoints of the edges of my stock outline. Let's take a look at this model for a minute. We've always been able to interrogate the faces of a model, in all but three cases, interrogating the face of a model will give you the lowest point on that face in the axis that you're interrogating. I'll get to those three exceptions in just a minute. I'll open the Move Part Origin dialog again just to give us X, Y, and Z fields to work with. With the Z field active, if I Alt-click on the face of this hole, I get minus four inches returned since the hole goes all the way through this four inch thick block. If I alt click this face, I get negative 1.448 and some change, since the lowest point on this face is here at this shoulder. If I activate an X field and alt click on this face, I get the lowest X value on this face, which would be along this edge. I mentioned that there are three exceptions to interrogating a face returning the lowest value for the axis that you're interrogating. Those three exceptions are found in the process dialog. This field that is commonly called the top of the part field, as well as the entry and exit clearance fields, will return the highest point of the face that you're interrogating in the depth axis of the machining coordinate system. So, all clicking this face with the top of the part field active returns the highest Z value on this face, while all clicking the same face with my cutting depth field active returns the lowest Z value on this face. As I mentioned, we have virtual points on the edges of the faces, and these can be interrogated just like normal geometric points. For that matter, they can also be dimensioned directly, rather than having to create or extract geometry. 
so we can use many of our dimensioning tools directly on solid models by using these virtual points. I'll put a couple of dimensions on this model using virtual points. So we have dimensioned directly on the solid, uh, something that previously we would have needed to have extracted or created geometry to do. The second interrogation mode is accessed by holding down the Shift key along with the Alt key. This interrogation mode returns the entire XYZ data set at one time. If I want to move my part origin to this corner, for example, I simply make certain that either the X, Y, or Z field is active in my Move Part Origin dialog, then hold down Shift and Alt while I click on the virtual point on this corner. I can use any other point, virtual or geometric, or any circle to fill in the X, Y, Z fields in most any window that provides those fields. We've looked at the two interrogation cursor modes and how to use them on geometry and solids, as well as using the new virtual points both for interrogation and dimensioning. If you would like to learn more about how using these tools can streamline the flow of your programming, or if you have any other GibbsCam related questions, reach out to your local GibbsCam reseller. They are ready and able to help.